Rick, you've worked with Terry Flanagan today. What sort of shape is he in ahead of his big fight against Jose Zapita? Yeah, he looks really, really sharp, as you'd expect him to be three weeks out from the, the fight. I think three weeks out from the fight is where you you really start just to put your foot down for that next two weeks. And then, then you generally have a week winding down, but he's uh, exactly where he wants to be for this you know, state. I mean, he's got his own trainer and everything, but uh, it was nice to have a little bit of a move about with him, give him a little bit of advice, you know, because we're like... Uh, Family in Manchester, but British boxing in many ways, you know. And if I, I'm always there to give any of advice to any of our boys who are heading for world titles, especially a Manky Union. What sort of emotions do you have when you see, you know, a friend fighting for a world title? Do you wish oh, you were still in there? I do, yeah. I always, you know, wish I was, you know, still in there. You know, it's as much as I cheer when I'm here and Calfrock and you know, and all the, you know, and James the Gale and all the people that, you know. Uh, you know, fighting for world titles. Every, I always, always want to want to be in there. But I do get nervous, especially for you know a Mancunian, and especially for Terry. We're very, very proud Mancunian people. You know what I mean? We always get fantastic support. They're very passionate sports fans, whether it be football or boxing. You know, and Terry's a real success story. You know, he's, you know, no disrespect to some of the Olympians. You know, they've had the grooming, they've had the pedigree, but you know. Kerry's come from where I started from, you know, working around the, the, the working men's clubs in and around Manchester as a young amateur boxer to fighting for the, the pinnacle, fighting for the, the world title, which is the stuff you dream of. So it's a real success story and I think he's got a great chance. What is it that impresses you most about Terry and what he does in the ring? He's got good feet, you know, in and out, you know, uses the distance very, very good. You know what I mean? He's, and he's he's an unbeaten fighter himself now. We keep going on about the opponent with his unbeaten record and, you know, these big knockout punches, you know. But, I mean, if you've got a big, you know, Terry's a, you know, he goes for gold, this opponent, with his punches. And I think, you know, Terry loves it, picks his punches very, very well. He judges the distance very, very well. And if this fella comes swinging in his big A, you make, because I think Terry will have the knowledge to just shift in, shift in and out, and pick him off and get there first with the punches. Um, so I think I think he's got the tools and styles to, to, to do it. I mean, in some sports, fighters don't want their achievements better, but um, you, Terry will be the first Manchester fighter since you to win the world title. You still want him to roar him on to win to take your record, didn't you? Absolutely. You know, at the end of the day, <coughs> I'm, I, you know, when I first walked through the gym as a ten-year-old, if you'd have said to me to win four world titles at two different weights, you know what I mean, and have record crowds and fight in Vegas, and I said they were joking, you know, so. You know, it's, I, I have no problem in getting behind these fighters. To be honest with you, you know, I've, you know, you feel like one of your brothers will be winning a world title, won't you? If Terry can, if Terry can lift this, you know, what I mean, we're very, very proud of where we come from in our roots in Manchester, and he's Terry's a nice guy. Uh, jibbed in the Costa Zoo fight at ringside to, to see me all them years ago, and when he did that, but he never thought his chance would come. And said, but it's here now. As long as he believes in it, I think he can bring it home for us. Yeah, so he famously jibbed in that night, and. He speaks to you as one of your one of his heroes. Although you're still in your thirties, does it make you feel old when he's fight to say that now? <clears throat> well, it does. Yeah, I mean, it was only you know the other week that uh, was a ten-year anniversary to the Costa Zoo fight, which is very very fitting. I think Manchester boxing is a boom again at the minute. You know, when you think, you know, we had the ten-year anniversary last week. You know, for for my Costa Zoo fight, and it's just so fitting that I just set the ball rolling for Terry's world title attempt. You know, in three weeks' time, and then we've got Scott Quigg defending his world title. Then we've got Anthony Crawler challenging for the world title. That's three Man Manchester fighters fighting for world titles in the space of a few weeks. I don't think anyone in the country has got that at the, the, the minute. So it's a real. But these boys are putting Manchester back on the map, boxing map for us. To be honest, you know, we, we've had the days where it was Ricky Hatton and Michael Brody and Anthony Farnell, Mike Gomez, Cal Thompson, Steve Foster. Sorry if I'm leaving anyone out. <coughs> but the next batch are coming through: Terry Flanagan, Anthony Corolla, Scott Quick, and I think all three of them will bring world titles on. How hard is it to beat Jose Zapita, who Terry faces? I think it's 23 wins, 20, 21 KOs. Well, you know, he's, he's, he's a good fighter, you know, but at the end of the day, good fighters can get beat, you know, and, you know, just like I did when I bought, when I boxed Costa Zoo all them years ago. You know, he's 23 fights unbeaten, 20 knockouts, but to be honest with you, you know, there's no one on that record that Terry should, you know, should fear, to be honest with you. You know, I don't think there's a Terry Flanagan on that record, and as long as Terry goes in there, believes that he can do it, like I did against Costa Zoo that night, uh, I, there's no reason he can't he can't bring it bring it home. And of course, you had your 10 year celebrations at Costa Zoo. Was it bittersweet for you at all around that time? It was fantastic. You know, I mean, it's 
Sometimes you always think 10 years is such a long time, you know, since the Costa Zoo fight, and you think, you know, surely by then your popularity has gone away, but it made me feel very, very proud. There must have been about four and a half people there at me, my party 10 years on. It makes me feel very, very proud, and that's the support <clears throat> that we get in Manchester, and, and not just Manchester, all over the all over the country. But there's one thing: when that crowd, when Koshizu quit on his stool at the end of the eleventh round, I wasn't far behind him. But believe you me, what gave me the extra push was that roar from the crowd: "Come on, Ricky!" And they, you know, they, they dragged me home. And you know, it's, Terry knows it's going to be a very, very tough fight. You know, and if he does go into the trenches, like it's always the case when you do fight for world titles, that believe you me, that Manchester's crowd will bring him home. You know, so it's. Uh, it's going to be a big night for the city, and I'll be there to, to cheer him on. And what would you advise Terry to, on the day if you give him a bit of advice on fight day? What would it be? On the fact of just try and keep as relaxed as you can. Just believe you, you know, have confidence in yourself to do it. It's very easy to look at a 23 unbeaten record and 20 knockouts and, and start to panic. Just believe in yourself. You know, there's lots of Americans come have come over here. You know, with big hype, you know, and you know they're expected to come and walk through Terry. I remember when Jeff Lacey, he had all the big noise, didn't he? You know, when they come over and joke, I was like, you know, school Jeff, you know. So there's no reason why, you know, we've got some good fighters in this country, and just because they come over with unbeaten records doesn't mean we can't beat them. And to think Terry will. And finally, Amy Khan's still hoping on Floyd Mayweather. You still have the belief he's got a chance against him? Uh, yeah, he's got a chance of getting the fight. Absolutely. You know, I think um, I think when you look at any of the opponents out there now that Ami has got left to face, I think he's pretty much beat them all, to be honest. You know, I mean, you Golovkins and you Cottles, you know, the big names in the sport, but they're too big. You know, I mean, he's already beat Saul Alvarez. You know, if I'm looking at fighters out there that are probably round about that way, you know, you, you're probably thinking Danny Garcia, Ami Khan. You know, they're the probably two that I would think would be on the, you know, that have got probably the biggest chance. You know, so fingers crossed. Ami has always not been shy of a challenge, he's always wanted to fight the best and Floyd is the best so hopefully Amir will get his chance.